John Bushman uh, is our next speaker. He's a Sun Prairie graduate. He's been coaching at Alaska since 2011. Became our defensive coordinator in 2014. Um, it, we've had a steady increase on defense, defensive performance each year this past season. We, it was one of our better years in school history. We notching two shutouts, holding four teams to seven points or less. And, you know, if Rice Lake and Holman could switch to an high formation, that would help us out a lot. Uh, we have a lot of success against other teams. That flexible and offense really gives us some problems. But uh, uh, Coach John Bushman is going to talk about tackling all season long. Thank you. Uh, so, again, John Bushman, defense coordinator, linebacker coach. Um, the thing that you really need to know about me is I am obsessed with tackling. Tackling to me is everything. We talk about how every play should earn or end and a tackler and turnover. Um, the last two seasons, basically, since we implemented this system or framework, we're calling, that I'll take you through, uh, the last two seasons, we've ended up being number two in the state for total tackles. Uh, the number one team, both being teams that played three more games than us. So our average is great. When you have an offense like ours that is hurry up, and they either punt quick or score quick, you're on the field a lot. So if you're not tackling, you got a problem, right? So as I said, second state, Booty, I'll talk about that in a second, but um, I always like to start with a quote. <clears throat> the defense only has one weapon, that's their ability to tackle, that's Tom Capers from when he was with the Panthers, whatever you think about him now, I'll leave that to yourself. Um, but really it talks about how offenses have the run game, they have the pass game, formations, motions, all that stuff. When it comes down to it, tackling, tackling is our best weapon. Um, if you line up perfectly, you do all your reads right, but you don't tackle, it doesn't matter, right? If you, you can screw up everything else and tackle well, it might still only be two or three yards, all right? It comes down to it like effort and tackling is the difference between a two-yard game to a five or seven-yard game. And when you look at a game as a whole, you would love to get those three to five-yard differential back every time. Okay, so tackling all season, why is it important? So before I became the defensive coordinator, the first couple years I reviewed, and I kind of went through and I tracked all of our missed tackles, and there was a trend. By the end of the year, we were missing more tackles. It's because it's not riding a bike. If you don't do it very often, you're going to lose it. All right? So the question was, how can we tackle all year? Because previous years it was, we don't want to get our kids hurt. We don't want to put them in that situation. And first off, honestly, if a kid's going to get hurt, he's going to get hurt. You hear about people that get hurt in the first week of practice when you don't even have pads on, all right? If they're going to get hurt, they're going to get hurt. Hopefully there's no Saints fans in here. I figured it was pretty safe to, to show this. But anyway, so the question is, how do you invest the time? And of all the talks I've ever done, this is the first one where I feel like I'm giving you a sales pitch. And it's not to buy something. It's to waste, not waste, it's to spend your time in practice in tackling every week because it will pay off. Again, you'll turn five-yard gains into two-yard gains because hopefully you make those first tackles. So voodoo, this is more of a glossary, just a terminology. Voodoo is what we call it. That's our tackling system, right? It's an acronym. Vision under control, hamstrings drive for five on the ground. We're a leverage tackle team. I'm not here to tell you be a leverage tackle team. I'm telling you, I'm never going back, right? But do whatever you want. But what I'm telling you is give it some name because part of tackling, honestly, is attitude, all right? I tell our kids we're the best damn tackling team in the state. And I tell them they can tell me that, and they love it because it's the only time we let them swear, right? But whatever you, whatever you are, you know, if you're a heads-up team, if you're a squeeze and rip, if you're a roll, whatever you are, whatever type of tackling you are, you can still take what I'm going to describe to you and just apply it to your system, apply it to your tackle. We have a certain progression because it fits for leverage. Use the same principles for your stuff, all right? So when I say voodoo, that's what it means. That's where our leverage is. Again, the kids love it, and it, became, it becomes a noun, and, and that becomes a verb. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take you through our schedule. I'm going to kind of describe what we do at each phases of the season, how much time we invest in each phase of the season, and then we go into drills, and then how those drills relate to in-season, in-game stuff. All right? So you start with your contact days. We do two contact days. All right? So the first day, we spend 20 minutes on the progression. And again, I'm going to show you all this, but basically making sure everyone has an even level of understanding. We include all of our offensive linemen. 
We include literally everybody. Freshmen do it with us as well, all age groups. I mean, we're not D1, so it's, it's easy for me to say we include freshmen, but we include everybody. And then we do a circuit. And you can see we do it for 20 minutes the first time because we're teaching, we're coaching, right? And this is level one stuff. And then at day two, we do progression 20 minutes, all right? What we, what we did my first year when I tried to do this was we, we did the circuit both days. And it kind of had diminishing returns. So we actually implemented a blocking circuit, which is a completely different conversation. But we found that this kind of is the right fit. But again, progression early. That way everyone understands it. Then we get into camp. All right? So day one of camp. Again, we have just helmets, just like everyone else. We do a 10-minute progression. And this is mostly for the kids that, hey, they had baseball. They had some other activity where they couldn't make contact days. And then we do a 16-minute circuit. Again, we're not spending as much time coaching because they should have already learned it, right? So we don't have to spend as much time. And then from there on, we alternate every other day doing the circuit. And in camp, we do the exact same drills every day. We don't get into variations quite yet. We don't get into progressions quite yet. In camp, we do the same thing every day. I don't care if it's boring for the, during camp. You better know how to do it because if you can't do the level one stuff, we can't build you up. Now, first day of full pads. This is the fun day. Again, we do the circuit right away to make sure everyone has that level of understanding. They're warmed up. And then we finally do our first competitive drill. We take, we take the secondary over here, and we take all the interior guys over here. So for the bubble one, um, and this one I'll probably actually draw, we literally do two variations of bubble. You know, we have two receivers on offense, we do our corner and our safety, and we literally just throw the ball out, and we run different combinations of bubble. You know, bubble one, bubble two, and then sometimes we'll add in a third guy, bring the linebackers over. It's just, it's kind of like, think about like Omaha, where you line up with your lineman and that. We don't do Omaha because I don't like the head smashing thing, but this is like real world scenario stuff. It's competitive, and we keep it at a short enough distance that they're not going to hurt themselves. The other one we do, we call foam booth because, again, it's not quite Omaha because the offense has a huge advantage when you do the Omaha drills. But basically what we do is we set up two cones. We set up an agile. We put the football in the agile. We have our offensive guy here and our defensive guy here. He's got to pick it up and run. Short distance, an agile is not very big. This distance is pretty short, but it's competitive, but it's, it doesn't promote any type of head-to-head -head because the offensive player naturally has to go to the side. And that's something to think about too, guys, when you're developing your drills for this. How often do you actually have head-to-head -head tackles? There's only one group that really ever has it. That's your Mike linebackers, your inside linebackers. So us, as groups, we never do any head-to-head -head tackling. Everything's at an angle. Like I said, take, go back, review your tape, you'll see 99% of your tackles are angles. Okay? So there's no point in wasting a lot of time on that. And honestly, that's where you're going to get your kids hurt in practice. So again, that's our camp. That's our camp. Every other day, and then some competitive drills that we'll mix in, like I said, first day of pads, and then usually you have a week, and then we'll mix in that competitive once a week to kind of get it not too monogamous.